here is a tutorial for a super multi-purpose aluminium track mounted dolly that you can build yourself for less than $50. The dolly is so adaptable that you are sure to find a combination that suits you. The super light and strong dolly can be used as a track mounted base and you can sit in it while an assistant pushes you or you can strap a tripod or stand to the base and walk beside it or you can use a dolly's very own tower or mini crane to get ready professional shots. This tutorial will show you how to build the dolly base and following tutorials will show you how to build the tower and the mini crane. Okay, this is the materials you need. First of all, two lengths of 32 by 32, that's one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch aluminium angle, about 800 millimeters long, which is 30 inches, and this will be used to mount the wheels onto. Next, you will need two lengths of 40 millimeter, which is an inch and a half wide, by 800 millimeters, which is 30 inches, of aluminium flat bar. This forms the triangular box section when bolted onto the angle. Both the above can be very light aluminium as the box section is very stiff and strong when fastened together. You then need four lengths of 25 by 25 millimeter, one inch by one inch aluminium square tube, 500 millimeters long, which is 20 inches. And these form the cross member of the frame. Now you will also need some threaded rod and then you need to go and buy two kiddie skateboards. The dolly just uses a skateboard wheel as they have nice bearings and a tough. We went to the discount store and bought the cheapest boards we could find. Junior ones have less physical board so they cost less. We also found bigger skateboards that came in a pack of the complete board plus a complete set of wheels. As we needed eight wheels, this might be a cheaper option, but see for yourself first. You're then gonna need eight eight millimeter bolts and nine knot nuts that will fit the wheels, and these are gonna keep the wheels on. Make sure that you get nylock nuts. These are the nuts that have a plastic insert in them to stop them getting loose. And finally, you need eight six millimeter, that's a quarter inch, by 60 millimeter long, two inches, bolts, washers, and nuts. These will be used to fasten cross members onto the box section. You just need a minimum of hand tools to do the job, a hacksaw to cut the aluminium, an adjustable wrench or spanner set, and a drilling machine and some drill bits, and a metal file. Right, let's start off by marking the sections that hold the four wheels to allow the dolly to run onto the rails. Take your length of 32 by 32 millimeter, that's one and a quarter inches aluminum angle, and cut two pieces that are 800 mils long, that's about 30 inches, and on each piece measure in from each end 100 millimeters, four inches, and make a mark on both faces of the angle exactly in the middle of each face. These holes are going to be used to bolt through the skateboard wheels. We have eight wheels, so we need eight holes. You need to drill these holes the same diameter as the bolts you bought for the wheels, and they usually are eight millimeters, five sixteenths of an inch, but check the bolts first. When you are finished, you should have two strips of angle each with two holes in each end. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Now we can get on and fit the four wheels to each strip of the aluminium. Grab both skateboards and an adjustable spanner or socket and undo the four wheels on your skateboard. Careful the bearing doesn't get lost and then you can dump the boards in the bin as all you want to keep are the total of eight wheels with their integral bearings. Then pair each wheel up with the eight millimeter, that's five sixteenth bolts and nylock nuts that you bought. Pass each bolt through the hole in the aluminum angle from the inside. Slip the wheel onto the bolt and then tighten 
pass each bolt through the hole in the aluminium angle from the inside and then slip the wheel onto the bolts and tighten the nylock nut until there's no play but the wheel still spins freely. Remember that each pair of wheels are fitted to the outside of the angle with the bolts coming from the inside and each pair of wheels are at 90 degrees to each other. You should now have two strips of aluminium angle, each mounted with four wheels. It's pretty flimsy at the moment and will easily buckle, so don't be tempted to stand on it. We'll be making the angle into a strong box section in the next stage, which will give a huge amount of stiffness and strength while retaining a very light weight. Okay, we're now going to stiffen the wheel beams. The wheel beams are stiffened and strengthened by making the open section of the triangular box girder. So now we need to get our 800mm, that's 30 inch by 40mm, 1.5 inch pieces of aluminium flat bar, which will go on top of the open angle section. On each length of bar, mark a point 50mm, that's 2 inches, and also 300mm meters, that's 12 inches from each end, and then mark the exact center of the point so you have four points along the bar in the center. Drill these holes in each bar with a six millimeter, it's quarter inch, hole, so you have two bars each with four holes. You can now place the piece of bar on top of the open angle section and you'll see that it forms a neat box section that has a triangular shape. You can actually grasp it in your hands but just be careful it's not bolted yet and you'll see that the whole structure has become incredibly rigid and strong simply by adding a third face to the triangle. Now remember the measurements you transpose to each piece of flat bar. You need to turn the whole assembly over so the wheels are up in the air and mark the same measurements on the apex of the angle. That's the pointy bit of the aluminium angle. We now need to drill matching holes so the angle and flat bar can bolt together. But it's virtually impossible to drill a hole exactly on the apex. So you must first take a file and file a little flat section on each of the four points of the angle where you're going to drill a hole. Once you've filed four little flats on each wheel beam, then drill another four by six millimeter, quarter inch, holes in each piece of angle. You can now turn the wheels to the correct side and the top piece of flat bar, four holes should align with the four holes you've just drilled in the apex of the angle. To make sure everything is lined up correctly, take your eight by six millimeter, that's quarter inch by 60 millimeter, two and a half inch bolts, pass them through the apex holes and into the flat bar holes. If they don't align 100%, remove the bolts for the ones that are slightly out and push the drill bit through both holes to square things up. At this stage, no nuts are needed because the cross arms need to go on first. Okay, let's make the cross arms. The two wheel beams are joined together with four cross arms. And these cross arms are made from 25 by 25, that's inch by inch aluminium square tube, 500 millimeters, which is 20 inches long. You will need to mark each tube 20 millimeters, three quarters of an inch, in from each end and drill a six millimeter, that's a quarter inch hole, in each end. Push your connecting bolts, four on each wheel beam, through the apex of the angle and then through the matching hole in the flat bar and then connect the cross arm. Slip a decent sized washer over the bolt and put the nut on and tighten to take up any slack and continue until all four cross arms are connected to the first wheel beam. Then grab the second wheel beam and repeat the process and tighten all eight nuts making sure the frame is square. You now have a basic dolly frame that will actually work but we have one last thing to do before we can call the base frame complete. If the nuts are not 100% tight and you can't do them too tight otherwise you'll crush the aluminium square tube, the whole frame can actually skew. 
so the wheel beams and cross arms are no longer at right angles to, to each other. To prevent this happening, we need to add two simple anti-skew rods to the final dolly. The anti-skew rods are very simple lengths of 6mm quarter inch threaded rod that are bolted in between the two center cross arms. These will also form mounting points for the mini crane tower if you're going to make it. Measure 200 mils, which is 8 inches, in from the ends of the middle cross arms and drill 6mm quarter inch holes in the sides of the cross arms to take the threaded rods. Use nuts on either side of the threaded rod on both sides of the cross arm so they lock together and this will prevent the dolly frame going out of shape and also, if you choose, provide mounting points for the tower or the crane. There we go, you now have a basic dolly frame to which you can strap a tripod or stand and place a little seat and even ride on it. If this is as far as you want to go, then you can skip the crane tower and crane tutorials and just read the rails and usage tutorial which is coming up next. The dolly in all its configurations can run on a huge variety of rails of your choice. You can basically use any type of tubing from half inch, that's 12 and half millimeters, right up to two or three inch PVC irrigation tubing. If you're using PVC or aluminium stock tubing, I would suggest that you cut the tubing into lengths that will actually fit into your vehicle if you're going away from home. To join the tubing lengths using stock tubing, just get a piece of wooden dowel that will fit inside the tube and cut it into 6 inch, that's 150 millimeter lengths, and push about 50% of the dowel inside one tube. On my dolly, I took the lazy route and decided to replace the old family gazebo. These come with a tubular frame that holds the canopy rigid and is absolutely perfect for rails. Each tube has a reduced section at the end with a little spring clip inside it and allows you to clip and unclip the tubing easy. By using the top frame of an old gazebo, you get around nearly 6 meters, which is 20 feet, of dual rail. Once you've claimed the tubing, you can toss away the other vertical tubes of the gazebo and just use the top section one, and they simply push together as shown. They also unclip and can be transported in the back seat of your vehicle. Convenient and easy. You can use your dolly in three ways. Firstly, use the basic truck on rails, as shown, and sit or stand on the dolly. I use a plastic milk crate as a seat. You will need an assistant to push you, but the dolly is tough enough to hold one person easily. If you build our tower and crane jibs, you've got a full-blown rig, and you can walk alongside the dolly and have full trucking movement plus 360-degree rotation with the crane. Finally, you can take off the crane head but leave the tower on the dolly and mount any tripod head or ball head on top of the tower. This way you can walk alongside the dolly to achieve full trucking motion with the advantage of being able to pan and tilt with the tripod head. Enjoy your dolly and please look out for forthcoming videos on the tower and the mini crane. If you subscribe to this video, you will be able to be automatically informed by YouTube when the videos are available.